confess to being uh, a little unsure when I was invited here what I would be expected to say. How many of you came here and, uh, expecting me to talk about MASH? <laughs> One. <laughs> okay. um, because of the, the relatively uh, informal nature of the gathering, I'd, I'd like to offer a couple of options. I, I actually wrote a speech, if you'd like to hear it, uh, but I also have, um, am, am perfectly willing to just sort of have a conversation if you just want to uh, talk about uh, or raise questions about uh, uh, anything that comes to mind. So I'll, I'll be 50-50. That's going to be tough. Half a speech and... <laughs> <laughs> I would love, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, whatever the case, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And the questions needn't just be about the social issues that I came to talk about. They can be about MASH or uh, Providence or uh, Patch Adams was not a series, but it's okay. It was a movie. Um, and uh, I... Uh, I'm literally kind of unclear about what would be the most appropriate thing because as I've walked around, I see it's a pretty informal place and uh, a lot of different things are happening and this was brought, uh, advertised, as I understand it, as a, as a workshop. So I thought, well, geez, what, what exactly am I supposed to workshop here? Um, well, let me, let me, yes, sir. Against capital punishment. Against capital punishment. Yeah. Well, let me let me suggest a couple of things. Um, I am the uh, I think it was stated I'm the president of the of board of directors of Death Penalty Focus, which is an uh, abolition organization, an organization intending to abolish the use of the death penalty in this country. And I am because I believe the use of the death penalty is doing great harm to our society. Um, I am also the co-chair emeritus of Human Rights Watch, which is the world's largest American-based human rights organization in the world, um, trying to promote the concept of human rights, the unalterable honor and dignity and value that every human being, by dint of birthright, should, uh, does possess and should be honored in having possessed. And those are things that are sometimes difficult for people to understand. So I, as I say, I wrote out a whole long thing, but maybe I can short circuit it and we can just sort of get into the questions. Uh, let me start, if I may then, by uh, pointing a friend of mine. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the name John O'Donohue. John, great. John was, uh, for many years, uh, he's an Irishman, he was a Catholic priest, he left the priesthood and became, uh, he studied uh, Kierkegaard and Hegel and became a philosopher and uh, was always a poet. John has written, uh, wrote a number of books before his untimely death. He was a dear friend of mine and died suddenly uh, uh, two years ago. And uh, he left uh, a big hole in the world when he died, but m fortunately much of his thinking was presented in books um, and let me just offer one, one passage from one of his books, a book entitled, interestingly enough, Beauty. The John, being a former priest, was a very spiritual man and uh, believed that there was a kind of divine beauty within each of us. That's a concept I believe in dearly. And uh, John wrote this. He said, we live between the act of awakening and the act of surrender. Between them, the journey where anything can happen, the beauty and the, fan, and the frailty. The shortest distance in the world, he said, is between you and yourself. The space in question is tiny, yet what goes on in this space determines nearly everything about the kind of person you are. I think what he's talking about here is the, the requirement we have as human beings, given the, given the gift of life that we've been given, to recognize our own value and to chart for ourselves a life that makes a contribution, makes the single contribution that only we can make. 
John also spoke, uh, we worked together with the organization that was mentioned, uh, uh, Concern America, which is a, a uh, refugee aid and development organization that works throughout the world. And I have been working with them for over 30 years. John worked with them as well. And that's where we met. And John spoke, I thought, quite eloquently about the fact that there are, there is, of course, poverty in the world. We all need to understand that. But he said there is also, there is not only economic poverty, but there's spiritual poverty. And that we as human beings need to recognize the gifts that have been given us and Im imbue ourselves with the knowledge of the spirit within us and the value of that spirit. John said that uh, we, those of us in the West, have to recognize that we're people of privilege. If you look at the fact that by accident of birth, we are here and others are living in Asia and Africa and different parts of the world where they live on the equivalent of a dollar a day if they have that. Uh, the mean average at this point is two dollars a day for every person in the world and that, and that, considers, that, that uh, takes into consideration those of us who have much more than that. So, the, the concept of, of being born here carries with it a great deal of responsibility.